Good morning, modern steaders. Good morning. I think it's gonna be a noisy day on the homestead today. We're gonna be weaning Daisy and Camo. They are bottle fed babies and they are old enough now where they don't need a bottle, but they're not gonna like it. They didn't really need bottles, but we were just trying to have that little extra bond time with them. Come on in Figaro. We have Camo and Little Man in the other goat barn over here overnight. Daisy spent the night with Hope's babies and Hope is separated with Buttercup because those are our two milking goats. So we keep them separated at night so we can feed them grain and their milk production will come overnight without any babies nursing off of them. So we have a lot to do this morning. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go over here. Ready? Come on in, Miss Buttercup. Just like, let me eat. Let's check on the meat birds. I'm sure they ate all their dinner. Of course they did. They drank all their water overnight, ate all their dinner, and then they fill it back up with wood shavings. Don't ask me why they do that. But they like to do it. You guys ready for breakfast? You gotta get out of there. There you go. And I'll get you some fresh water. All right, here you go. Here's your water. Gotta get you another feeder, too. Ready for some raisins? Come on, Miss Daisy. Is that some good hay? Is that some good hay? Yeah. Did you have a good night with Faith and Grace? How are the little ones today? Good. They all jumpative? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, ladies. Oh, you got a milk mustache there, Grace. Look at that. You're covered in milk. Yeah. Come on, boys. Ready to come out and have an adventure for the day? Good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good You're coming? We're waiting on you. There you go. Got some water, baby. There you go. There you go. Just going over there. Just going over there. Just a little bit. There you go. He's almost too big to hold. He looks like a big baby. Well, well, well. Would you look at that? Two, four, six eggs. 
right here. I like it. One of those is freshly laid. It's nice and warm. Good morning, piggies. You're nice and dirty. I got a cracked egg. Do you want it? You want it? Who wants it? All right, I'll put them over here. Here's one egg right here. One egg, two egg. You'll find it. There you go. They both got their eggs. Biscuits and gravy with their morning eggs. I love it. Ah, they like their morning eggs and one day we'll be enjoying biscuits and gravy with some eggs. Right, Camo? I think I found her favorite spot. She likes it right there? Yeah, because it's always in the sun. Right, she's from Arizona so she's used to the sun. Our weather up here has been crazy ever since Derek brought up Camo and Daisy. I think he brought the Arizona summertime weather with him. It's been in the high 80s and 90s. It's, that's just not the weather we get here in northern New Hampshire in May. I don't know about you, but on a nice warm summer's day, I enjoy a nice cold soda. And that's why I'm glad Olipop is sponsoring today's video. Olipop is the new soda 2.0. There's no processed sugar and there's no artificial flavors. My favorite one is the orange. It tastes like the Jubilee orange candies. So it's not good for you. We don't eat those anymore. But now I can drink it in a can and it's good for you. Listen to these ingredients. I probably won't pronounce them right, but ready for it? Let me drink some first. Oh, so good. The best part is I don't have to feel guilty about drinking this orange soda. Carbonated water, Ollie Smart, Kosova root fiber, chicory root, jasmine artichoke, calendula flower, marshmallow root, slippery elm, lemon juice, apple juice concentrate, Kosova root syrup, clementine juice, rose hips, stevia leaf, Himalayan pink salt, natural orange flavor extract. There's nothing in here to feel guilty about. If you'd like to try Olipop, use my link in the video description down below and you'll get 15% off their best-selling variety 12-pack. Hope wants to try some. It has warmed up fast this morning. We need to get in the greenhouse. Last year, we had an issue with tomato hornworm, which you love. Right. They love them. Devastated, not really devastated, but they probably got half of our tomato crop, I bet you. Yeah, and they just like pop up and they go fast. And then we had um, issues with our cabbage, cabbage, um, cabbage moss eating like the cabbage and the broccoli and stuff. What other issues did we have? We had first we started out with cucumber beetles, cucumber, cucumber beetles, beetles. Yep. and then we ended up having um, the hornworms, and then towards the end of the season we had. Cabbage, horn, uh, cabbage worms. So um, decided to try some beneficial insects. This is not gonna help with the hornworms, but it will help with cutworms and cabbage worms and supposed to help with cucumber beetles. Gina's been seeing some signs of insect damage on the plant, so Gina ordered some beneficial insects. So it seems kind of funny, we're putting bugs on our bugs to kill our bugs. So these are the good bugs that are supposed to eat the bugs that we're having issues with, other than the hornworm. Plus we've been putting screens up and stuff trying to keep bugs out, right. but we want the beneficial insects in there. And there could most likely be, benef uh, there could be stuff lingering from last year in there. And if we have the tomato hornworms come back, there is a beneficial insect we can get for those. Yeah. So we just gotta wait to see. And the first sign of tomato hornworms, we'll have to order a different beneficial insect. These are nematodes that we have right here. Look at your beautiful curtains you put up. Watch this. Ooh, fancy. You wanna come in? I do. You can just push through. So over here, I noticed some, some damage to the leaves starting. And that's when I decided to order, order the bugs. Yep. Something's eating them. So, we get ahead of them here. 
Well, maybe. <laughs> and then there's something going on over here with the cucumber. It's a little bit from when we first planted them, but then the new leaves look fine. But we're just gonna go ahead and take care of that. Some of the tomatoes are looking really good. Look at this guy. Nice. We need to replant some of the tomatoes, but they're looking good. And I planted the peppers, and the next day I started seeing some little holes. So it just could be some insects, so. Looks like we have a potato that we didn't dig out of the ground last year growing right there. Yes, and over here we have some volunteer cherry tomatoes, and I'm going to transplant them over here at some point. Look at those, those are nice. So we have some cherry tomatoes that had fallen off from last year that are reseeded themselves. So I made sure our sprayer has no screen in it, which it doesn't. They recommend different kinds of sprayers for this application, but this is what we have and I couldn't find the kind that they recommend anywhere local, so this should work well. I'm gonna add a little bit of water in, then I'm gonna put my nematodes in and add more water to kind of mix it all up together. I'll link the website down below to where Gina got them, not an affiliate or anything, but it's pretty neat to see the beneficial insects and what they can do. This is our first time using them, so we don't know if they work or how well they work. So it's always an experiment here at the homestead. I really don't know what a nematode is, but they're supposed to be good for your garden. says do not get in your eyes so I guess nematodes aren't good for your eyeballs When you're growing your own food, there's always new things you learn. I never would have thought I'd be putting beneficial insects in my garden. It's a squeaky.
Alright, let's go get the cucumbers. <laughs> Luckily, Gina has started a lot more plants, so the cucumbers that don't make it, we can replace them. And we're going to be putting more cucumbers down here. We're going to be starting these ones from plants we have in the basement, transplants. And then that, that last little bit of the row, we're going to start to seed. So this is the row we had our tomatoes in last year. So it'll be interesting to see if we have any issues with the hornworms coming out of the soil or not. All right, now we'll get the tomatoes done. And there is one. There's actually quite a few looking good, but there's one huge one over here. I can't believe how well it's doing. Look at that thing. It's funny how the different varieties are doing different, are growing at better rates or not. And which ones like our soil and our climate better. The Amish Paste are doing awesome. Gina just planted some onions next to our tomatoes. We did this last year and it worked really well. The nice part is these onions grow a little bit quicker. It seemed like for us in the greenhouse, so we were able to pick them and harvest them throughout the summer. We had fresh onions. It was nice. When you're doing burgers or different stir fries, to be able to come in here and pick an onion. I have a little bit of this left over. I'm going to spray the row that our tomato plants were in last year because they had the hornworms in there. There's probably other insects in that row. So we're just going to spray it, get these beneficial insects in the soil, and wait and see what happens. I think we broke our sprayer. It doesn't seem to like the nematode. I can't pressurize it. Whatever we have left for pressure is what we got. If you know of uh, the correct spray to use with putting in beneficial insects, leave it in the comments down below. There must have been an o-ring on here somewhere that pumped the air in, because now it's not. I'm just going to put this in the watering can and we'll water it on here. Maybe. So we had some really exciting stuff happening over here. We started seeing some potato plants arising out of here. Look at that. It looks nice and green. Right around here should be another potato plant. Yep, they're just starting to come out of the ground. Look at that. So they are doing good. I can see a big one right there poking up. Oh yes. Right, right here. here you can see it right coming out right and then right here and then there. So the they're looking good doing good too. They're looking good. The blueberry plants that we just planted are doing good. Some above have some little uh, buds coming and then these other ones are doing fantastic. They're from last year. It's amazing to see how much they've just blossomed in just over a week. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Those are gonna be blueberries. This is fantastic. And then all these ones, they've greened up quite a bit since we planted them. So they seem to be liking our potting mix and these fabric bags. Yep. Come over here and see these ones. They've already butted out. Look at that. Okay. 
Yeah, wow. And these are the Patriots. So awesome. Yep. And then the potatoes on this side are doing better than the ones on the other side. And I thought maybe these potatoes would be a little bit behind the other side because these ones are shaded first thing in the morning. The sun doesn't get over here till the sun is up over the greenhouse. The garlic is doing super good. The onions are starting to be good. Look at these. Those are growing so tall. I got some strawberries coming in. One of the things you notice that the onions we started from plants are a little bit behind the onions that we started from bulbs. The ones we started from bulbs are just really taking off. I think the ones that we started from plants, they'll pick up in a little bit, but it's crazy to see that these ones have really taken off. We've got bulbs on this side and all on that side. And these are our plants. I don't know why I do this, but I always do one building project around the pig. <laughs> Trying to work around pigs usually isn't that easy, so we're going to find out today. They usually get very curious and they want to see what you're up to. What are you doing, Daisy? I hear you. I hear you. I made the girls a little mud puddle and they're loving it. They're covered in mud. Huh? They're already trying out their new home. I made them a little mud bath. A little spa day for them. You ladies liking that already? I pinned it with rebar so hopefully they can't push that pallet, but pigs are very destructive. They're hard on everything. You're covered in mud. Yeah. Does that feel good? Yuck, they're getting me covered in mud. So what do you call it when it's 88 degrees in Northern New Hampshire in May? It's not an Indian summer. What do you call an early summer? It's probably a trick and we'll have snow next week. Probably, I just looked at the forecast. They're not calling for any freezing temperatures, but you never know, it could happen. <laughs> Oh, you want some chicken food, eh? Too late. Here, I'll feed you somewhat in the shade. It won't be so hot at least. How many chickens are gonna be in here? One or two? Just the one. Two. Three. Four. Six. Seven. There she goes. Nine. Nine. And you got how many this morning? There was six. And there's two of the pigs. So four. 
So 13. 13 so far. What do you think, Miss Daisy? She was with the babies all day. Well, for a couple hours. She needs a break. Come on, do the break. Get used to it. You had too much fun playing, now you need a rest. What are you doing, Camo? Hanging out in the shade? You're the smart one, eh? Good boy. Enjoying your hay? Little man. You're not liking being over here yet, huh? You'll get used to it, mister. Was your play day exhausting? Was your play day exhausting? You played with Daisy for a few hours and now you're tired? Huh? We need a little nap. You need a nap from playing with girls too. We can't leave her out here with you. Not right now. Huh. You still look sleepy, missus. You're enjoying that hay there, little pea? All this green pasture, and you'd rather have old stale hay? What's the matter? You girls are crazy. You ladies warm? You should be under the coop where it's shaded. Yeah. Three. Five, seven, ten, eleven. I feel like a stir fry tonight, so I'm cooking some rice and some broth, and then I'm just gonna get my vegetables ready. Instead of a regular stir fry, I'm gonna make a sweet sauce with maple syrup, onion filling. I can turn that down a little bit. I just cut up some carrots really thinly so you can get those cooking in there, sauteing up. Don't want hard carrots in there. These are just some frozen peppers that we had from the garden from last year that I froze. I'm just going to add that to this. And I'm just going to let these all kind of cook up, saute, soften up before I go ahead and add everything else. I'm going to go ahead and make this sauce and I am going to taste it before I add some arrowroot in it and see if it's good. Um, I'm just throwing some stuff together. I'm trying to make a, a sweeter. Uh, stir fry sauce and I'm also not going to be using soy sauce because that bothers our stomachs gluten free or not and we've tried um, liquid aminos and we don't really like that and coconut aminos we can't use because that's coconut so I am going to do a half a cup of chicken broth and a quarter cup of maple syrup. And a quarter cup of sesame oil. And I am going to just start with a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm putting salt in because I'm not using the soy sauce. Get it out. There we go. Once it tastes good, then I'll add arrowroot, mix that in here as well, and then that will help everything thicken. So it'll be, it'll be a sauce, not a dressing. I was expecting
expecting a darker color. I don't know why, because I'm not using soy sauce, so. So you just wanna see what this tastes like. I think it needs a little bit, a little bit more salt. Add a little bit, so then it probably ends up being really a half a teaspoon. Salt, I think I'm gonna add one more ginger and maybe a half a clove of garlic. I hope I don't ruin it because I do think it tastes good. But it's not like really, really flavorful. So let's see if I can get this in here. There we go. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a teaspoon and a half of arrowroot. So I have some leftover broccoli here. So it's already been cooked. So I'm just gonna add that into my dish, into my pan. And some chicken. Here goes nothing. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my stir fry. Hopefully it thickens up to a nice tasty sauce and everyone will love it. Dear Lord, thank you. Hey. If you've ever used beneficial bugs in your garden, leave it in the comments down below. I want to know your success and your failure with it. This is something totally new to us, but we can't wait to see the results. I want to thank Olipop again for sponsoring today's video. I used to be a huge soda junkie and I haven't drinking soda in a long time. So it's nice knowing now that there's a good, healthy option for me to have. And I've been enjoying Olipop. So if you guys want to try Olipop, click the link in my video description down below and you'll get 15% off the Variety 12 pack. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. And we'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye.